I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I want to show you how you can create and save your own template so you can make scalable designs. The idea for this video has come from questions I've been getting recently about print on demand. So if you're into print on demand, or if you have a small business and you want to make your own designs for your products and materials, this will be a step-by-step -step tutorial showing you how you can create this right here. This is the particular look we'll make today. And you can change out the graphics. You can change on the fly the fonts, change the colors. Let me show you exactly what it is, and then we'll do it together. This is what we're going to build together. This is a template, and you can see it's broken down into the graphic layer, which you can bring in anything you want. There's a shell. Maybe you swap it into a different design that has a flower. You can then change the text on the fly, change the text and it works exactly how you want it change the font change the colors anything you want to do that's what the template is for so let's make it if you're new to inkscape when you start on the welcome screen choose the a4 210 millimeters 297 page border we're going to use this to center everything and have it all aligned properly on that note let's bring in our guides normally if you hover over the ruler area you can drag down guidelines and use them to set things up properly but i want to do it absolutely perfect so let's go to extensions render guides creator you'll get a dialog box you want to be on preset custom columns two rows to apply this is what we want the vertical and the horizontal guides perfectly centered to the page we're going to build this thing from the outside in and it's time to now introduce layers there's some chatter on Twitter about the Inkscape developers making improvements to the Objects tab and Layers tab and kind of combining them, which I think will be awesome. For now, this is how I use it. Go to Object, Objects, and you'll get a sidebar menu. What I did before is I called this layer we're working on the Color Palette layer. If I hit the Delta, you can see it has the colors and it has the example for the reference. We want to add a new layer that's separate from that called the design layer. I'll click on the plus down here. We'll call it design layer, add. Just to be safe, I'll lock that color palette layer. Now we're on the design layer and I can start building. Actually, let's go to object again, click on fill and stroke. So I have my fill and stroke menu also open because now I can take create stars and polygons. The default might be on polygons with five. Go over to stars and change it to 200. Enter. I'll hold shift and control and drag open a nice even 200 point star about the width of the page. It wants to snap, which is okay. Over here is snapping. See this lightning bolt inside of a magnet? Your snapping guide might be on the far right. I do want it enabled, but I also want this snapping guide enabled. If you go to the right of this middle one, it says toggle snapping to the object midpoint. And the one next to that says toggle snapping to the object rotation center. Make sure all three of these are selected. It may not work perfectly right now because it's thinking, where do I snap? Where do I snap? So instead we'll go back to object, align and distribute. Here's our menu relative to page, center it horizontal and vertical. Now it's perfect. Click back over to the objects tab. You see, we have our design layer. Here it is, path 28987. You can retitle that if you want. Just double click and type something that will help you remember. I'll just leave it the way it is. You can hide it, unhide it. It just shows that we're now working in the design layer. So next, I want to make these little tiny dots. I'll go back to my circle tool, hold shift and control to make a nice even circle. Let's change that fill to something that we can see better. Take the stroke off and watch how it's going to snap right into the center, right like that. It sucks it right in. Let's bring this all the way out almost to the star points and I'm going to add these little tiny dots. I don't know if you can see them, but I want to have some texture here. I can do that by making sure I'm on fill and going to pattern. Now there's the first one. These are all the different default patterns, stripes, one, one, go all the way down until you see polka dots, large white, click on that. And there you go. There's some polka dots. They're too big, but there's a way you can change them. Go to edit paths by node. And here's why we kept the page border. It's going to give us modification nodes that will allow us to change the pattern itself. You see this X? If I drag this X, it's going to move around where the pattern lies inside of the shape. This square, if I just drag it indiscriminately, 
it'll warp it and smush it. So I don't want that. Instead, I'll hold Shift and Control again and drag this little node perfectly diagonally towards the X, which is changing the size evenly. Now intuitively, you might think, okay, how do I change these white dots to a different color? I'll go back to fill and change. Oh, it didn't work. So the only way to change the pattern, Control-Z will put it back to the dots, is to go up to Filters, Color, and choose Colorize. You'll get your menu box here. I've got it defaulted, but if you don't see it, let's just mess it up on purpose. I'll go to Yellow. Then when you hit Live Preview, it changes them yellow, any color you want. You have to unclick Live Preview and re-click on my computer. It, I'm not sure if it's going to render in real time for you. I'll go to some blue. Right there is good. It just gives it some texture. I'll click Apply. Let's keep working our way in. Now we want to have this white background. So I'll go back to Circles, Shift and Control. Right there is good. We'll make it white. And I do want to stroke on this. Let's cheat and make it this dark blue. And for the stroke width, we'll go 1.5 perfectly. You see these things over here? It looks like an arrow with like an edge of a picture frame. I want to unselect the far left one. When scaling objects, scale the stroke by the same proportion. Unselect that. What that does is, if I duplicate this shape, Control D, and then I scale it down, it keeps the exact same width of that outer stroke, which is what I want. Usually when you're designing, it is helpful for it to scale down. So let's say it was selected. If I duplicate this one and scale it way down, you see how it thins itself out? That's normally what you want, but not in this case. I want all my lines to be the same. So I'll delete that and unselect it, which means it's gonna stay 1.5 no matter what I do with it. This white area will be where we put the text. Let's keep going. We'll go to fill and we'll choose this medium blue. Let's do another one, control D, scale it down for where the center graphic is gonna go. Stroke, make that white and the fill, is gonna go to the dark blue. That leaves us with another pattern, these little squiggly lines here. So I'll grab this, Control D, stroke white, and the fill is gonna be another preset pattern. I think it was called wavy white. There we go. This is not the default. Again, if you wanna make it look like that, go back to your Edit Paths by Node, just to show you, it might come looking more like this. You can change it any way you want. <laughs> But first for speed, we'll go with that one right there. And over here is hierarchy. If you go to selector tool, I want to drop that beneath that dark blue center. So I'll drop it down one step and there you go. We have now completed the design layer. Let's go see what we did. So here's design layer. Here's all the different pieces. You can change the titles if you want, but I'm not going to do that. You know what? It looks like my wavy layer should come in a tad right there. That's good. Okay, let's make another layer plus We'll call this the text layer, add. Now we can make the guide circles to create the curved top text and curved bottom text. We'll do it once, save it in the template, and you'll have access to it forever. Grab your circles tool, and I have mine set to a green stroke. We'll take the fill off. I'll put it roughly there. We'll move it if needed. And I do wanna label this one. I'm gonna call this guide circle top text. For the actual font, I'll go to my text tool and I'm on Arial Heavy. If you don't have heavy, just choose Arial Bold. I'm on 45 points and I want to add a kerning. This thing over here, spacing between letters, I'll do 10. And we can type out change the font. For organizational purposes, we'll call that top text. Fill in stroke. I want that to be this dark blue. To curve the text, while you have it selected, hold shift and grab only the guide circle. Go to text, put on path, and there it is upside down. No problem, if I hit the guide circle, just the guide circle, do it twice, you'll get the handles here. I can then move it, and sometimes it backtracks a bit, but I'll take it all the way around to where I want it. Go to my objects tab. This is the guide circle, I wanna hide it. Now I can see a little bit better. Let's make it bigger, let's go to 45. I don't even have to get the guide circle back. I can double click on the text. See my hash mark? It's gonna snap right into the middle, just like that. And now I can rotate it even without that circle guide. Almost the same steps for the bottom. Let's get the circle tool, shift and control. It snaps right into the center. Make it a little bigger because we're gonna have to reverse it. I'll call that guide circle bottom. 
bring in our text. Let's make this bold, not heavy, just so it fits. Alter as you please. Make that 45. And see how it got thrown off? Another shortcut, Control-4, will recenter things for you. I want this to be the same color as the top text. I have it selected, hold Shift, get my guide circle text, put on path, go to Object, Flip Vertical, and there it is upside down. Let's click off of everything, get the guide circle in place first. It should snap just like that. Hit it again so you get your rotation handles and bring in your text. Alter as you please. Hide the guide circle, change this marker to bottom text. Okay, this leaves one last part, the variable. Let's add a plus on the layer. We'll call it the center graphic. It's your choice. You can bring in assets. Like if you already have the flower, I'll bring this in here. You can do that, bring in the scallop, and you can see the interchangeability, if that's a word. I've got my flower there, my scallop there, change the fonts. I actually did build a manta, but let's just finish this by actually saving it. I'm going to hide the center graphic so it's a true blank slate here. Go to File, Save Template. You can name it whatever you want, Author Ricky. And I'll show you how to pull it up. You open up Inkscape, go to File, New from Template, and here's the one we made together. Iron Echo Circle Badge Template, Create from Template. It's all right here waiting for you. And that's gonna do it for today. I hope this was helpful. If you have questions specifically on how to make this template, if you're into print on demand and you wanna scale your designs, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're trying to build and maybe we can make another one of these together. <laughs> okay, see you next time.